Hey, what's up? Apple here with my very first episode of Apple Look Stuff Up. Uh, I'm pretty excited to finally do this. And of course, my very first episode, it's going to be special and it's going to be a little bit different than what I initially intended it for. Um, it's going to be a combination of me looking stuff up. Um, and while I was looking this up, it also kind of took me down a more of a mental health, um, personal growth um, as well, which kind of also applies to the whole Apple figures stuff out videos that I plan on doing for mental health. So um, keep that in mind, but um, you'll understand why uh, in a minute. And um, just to throw it out there, I am trying very hard not to script these episodes as much as I can. I know scripting it would make my video more concise, probably communicate a little bit better, but I feel like I would lose a little bit of that intimacy and the conversationalist aspect of these videos and might make me seem less genuine um, if I were to script things out. So what I plan on doing is having notes. Um, I'll kind of word for word express um, or not express, but tell you what I researched and I will uh, edit it, put it up on the video, like somewhere around here or wherever, um, what exactly it is I'm reading. Um, and then kind of in my own words, explain what that means and maybe extrapolate a little bit on that. Um, just to kind of give you an idea where I plan on going with this. Um, if I decide later on, I might change that format. I might become more scripted. We'll see. Um, this is kind of a work in progress for me. Obviously, being my first episode, I don't really know um, what I'm doing. Um, so we're just going to try it and see what happens. Um, so without much further ado, the topic. Um, so a little background. Um, obviously, right now in the world, it's kind of crazy. Um, obviously we're dealing with coronavirus, so, you know, a lot of us are stuck in quarantine and more recently, um, there's been a lot of, um, news around black lives matter. So yes, please note, this is going to be political. Um, but I want it to be more focused on our own psychology, uh, which will get me into the thing I looked up. So a lot of videos I've been watching have talked about something, um, along the lines of bias and that bias is the root of a lot of kind of psychological issues um, pertaining to racism and pertaining to um, uh, just, you know, even beyond racism, things like bigotry and hatred and um, the reason why we do what we do to other human beings, uh, whether they be good or bad. And one of the most um, blaring ones that I kept seeing that I needed to do more research on because I'd never heard it before this happened is the idea of implicit bias. So um, let me go ahead and I will uh, throw my glasses on real quick because I'm blind without them um, and kind of read off some of the definitions that I had found. Um, I will say these notes that I will be reading from, I plan on putting the um, link down in the description below of my notes and then all the websites I went to to find these definitions or my research that I pulled this information from. That way you can do your own fact checking on what I did my research on and I welcome you to in the comments if you'd like to add something. Maybe there's another website with a different definition that you think is better or that you um, think has more relevance to what I'm talking about. And I welcome those comments and I hope you do that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and we'll do that. So uh, first off, um, this one I got from Wikipedia and it says implicit bias or implicit stereotype is the unconscious attribution of particular qualities to a member of a certain social group. Implicit stereotypes are shaped by experience and based on learned associations between particular qualities and social categories, including race and or gender. Individual perceptions and behaviors can be influenced by the implicit stereotypes they hold, even if they are unaware or unintentionally hold such stereotypes. Implicit bias is an aspect of implicit social cognition, the phenomenon that perceptions, attitudes, and stereotypes operate without conscious intention. 
The existence of implicit bias is supported by a variety of scientific articles and psychological literature. Implicit stereotype was first defined by psychologist um, Mazarin Banaji and Anthony Greenwald in 1995. Um, so yeah, that's the very first definition that we come across. And um, what it's basically saying, at least in my understanding of what I just read, is that we, based on our experiences in our past, um, we have an unconscious, we unconsciously will judge other people based on race, gender, um, and probably a lot of other things. Um, including maybe the name of someone um you know uh if someone has a name that seems um like it, it's hard to i'm trying to like come up with the words here but um i mean there's uh there's been obvious evidence that i have seen um i don't have the um a link to this evidence although i probably should now that i think about it um, and maybe I'll look for it and put it in the uh, description after I uh, finish filming this. But that there's been studies shown that the name on a resume um, will affect your ability to get the job regardless of the qualifications in the resume. So if someone has a black sounding name, they are less likely to get a job with equal resume, like if the Resumes are literally written exactly the same, um, but if one person has a black sounding name and another resume has a white sounding name, that the white sounding name on a resume is more likely to get called back for an additional interview or to be offered a job. Um, and that doesn't necessarily say that the person who's reading the resumes are um, consciously racist they are they might be exhibiting an implicit bias is what this is saying so the idea is that um they read a name and they immediately associate something um either negative or positive um regardless of the rest of what is inside of that resume um some other examples so uh, for those of you who don't know, I am half Japanese and one of the more common stereotypes. And I'll be honest, I am guilty of making these stereotypes in a usually jokingly matter. But the idea that um, Japanese or Asians are capable of doing math better than any other race, um, that is a very common one. Or that we are more likely to become a doctor, um, yada, yada, yada. And um, I think that they've actually shown that having an Asian sounding name on a resume might have the exact opposite impact than having a black sounding name if you were to use a white sounding name as your, um, your basis, your average, so to speak. Um, so kind of an interesting, you know, again, it's not saying that someone is outright racist. Granted, I'm sure there are plenty of companies and people who run the HR department of companies that are overtly racist and will say, oh my God, this name sounds like this is a black person. I will most certainly not call that person back for an interview. I'm not saying that doesn't exist because I'm sure it does. Um, but this is more calling out the fact that there's a lot of us who would consider ourselves not to be racist, but will still have these implicit biases. Um, and that it is locked away in our unconscious or subconscious mind um, based on the fact that we have experienced um, certain things in our past. Um, whether that is social norms or the media or film, television, um, conversations we had as children with family members and the news. Um, there's, there's so many variables there. And I, unfortunately, um, as much as I would like racism to be just the black and white thing, cause it would make it easier to target and hone down and fix um, it's not. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, continuing on to the next 
um, definition that I had found. Uh, this is actually from dictionary.com. says that implicit bias, um, which is a noun psychology, is a bias that results from the tendency to process information based on unconscious associations and feelings, even when these are contrary to one's conscious or declared beliefs. Um, basically saying the same thing, but what I liked about this one is that these associations and these feelings can be contrary to your own conscious um, or declared beliefs. That's kind of the most important part of that that I see. And the reason I say that is that I think there's a lot of us who are very much adamant that we are not racist. I'm pretty adamant that I am not racist. I um, would like to believe that I treat everyone equally, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of sexual orientation. Um, and, but that this is kind of telling us that there's an unconscious part of our mind that makes us do things of, that completely opposed to that. And we don't even realize it until we retrospectively look back on it and we're like, oh, wow, yes, I actually did do that. Wow, that was really racist of me that I had done this instead of doing that. And that's kind of where I'm going. Like, I think that's why this was such an important thing in a lot of videos that I was watching about the Black Lives Mo or the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so the next one I got is actually from the Ohio State University, and it's called the uh, Kirwan Institute there. Um, and from this department of the Ohio State University, um, they had defined implicit bias as also known as imp implicit social cognition, uh, which we talked about from the Wikipedia article. Um, implicit bias refers to the attitudes or stereotypes that affect our understanding, actions, and decisions in an unconscious matter. These biases, which encompass both favorable and unfavorable assessments, again, like I said, with being Asian, um, like there, there's some positive things that have stereotypes that have affected me positively because of my Asian heritage and people thinking that I am automatically better at math, um, regardless of whether that was true or not. Um, and these are activated involuntarily and without an individual's awareness or intentional control. Um, that's really important there. Um, and I'll get more into that later. Uh, so residing deep in the subconscious, these biases are different from known biases that individuals may choose to conceal for the purposes of social and or political correctness. Um, so that one there, um, there's biases that we know that we, we may have. Um, such as, um, a comedian who's decided that they're going to be politically correct. Um, it'd probably be my best example I can think of off the top of my head. So, um, I remember growing up in the nineties, um, a lot of comedians like to joke about race and I felt like it was good, but there became a point where it seemed as though that became not politically correct and it might be and there's there's good arguments either way and that's not really where i'm going with this um but rather that we suppressed those biases or we concealed them or we hid them from the rest of the world because we realize those biases are socially or politically incorrect and that we know that we would be judged harshly for having those biases. Um, a good example for that beyond the, uh, the whole comedian thing is the fact that um, there are people who are a part of supremacist groups like the KKK um, who hide the fact that they are part of that group. Um, there are racists who do not want it publicly known that they're racist and for good reason. I mean, it's, it paints a target on you. You don't want to be known as the racist person. Um, it's not socially acceptable. Um, like it was say back in the 17, 1800s where it was, it was the social norm to be racist back then. It seemed like it seemed normal 
to feel that way about other people because the rest of society or your community felt the same as you. And I see that um, this is something that it seems like we're going back to where we're starting to say that these biases are more normal because we're allowing these biases to be considered acceptable again. Um, I might be wrong about that, uh, but it does kind of with some of the things I see on social media, um, especially through the anonymity of the internet, more people are finding that there's other racists like them and that they're creating communities among each other and they're making themselves feel like they're more socially accepted um, for believing the things that they believe. Uh, that's again, that's kind of going away on a tangent, but something I thought that would be kind of important to bring up from that sentence. Um, this last sentence I found really interesting and I had to um, look more into it. Uh, this is where I went down the rabbit hole um, per se. They said, rather implicit biases are not accessible through introspection. And I was like, hmm, what the heck does that mean? Um, and so I started doing some more looking up and I stumbled upon a good article um, by a Jules uh, Holroyd, um, again, link down below, where they wrote a very good essay called Implicit Bias, Awareness, and Imperfect, Cogni Imperfect Cognitions. Sorry, English is hard, especially when it comes to big words like that. Um, and this idea is that we cannot necessarily in the moment when we're allowing our implicit bias to affect our decision making and affect our actions or um, in fact affect our thinking um, in that moment we are unable to be introspective about it it's um for those of you who are into, say, computer science um, or machines or anything like that, we tend to compartmentalize um, sections of how things work. Um, so, for instance, um, we might say, OK, you have a video card in your computer um, and it does this goes in and then this comes out. So, for instance, with a video card. Your software is like, I want you to render a um, this part of a video game or your movie or whatever. So it sends that signal to it. And then the out signal is a video signal to your monitor. And that's we kind of encapsulate that video card in a black box. What we're kind of saying here is that our bias, our implicit bias is a black box where we do not um, have the ability to see what is happening in that black box in the moment that we are using our implicit bias to change our thinking or actions. And um, that article goes a little bit more in depth into trying to find culpability from that, meaning can we make people responsible for being unaware that their implicit bias is doing this? Um, the argument in that is yes, and their analogy for that is leaving a um, leaving a dog in a hot car um, just because you in that moment forgot and you were unaware that the dog was in the car doesn't mean that you're now considered not guilty or not responsible for the harm that came to that dog because you left them in the car. Um, and so... Um, it's uh, it goes back to kind of a legal thing where um, ignorance is not a valid defense. You cannot plea ignorance. You cannot say that, oh, I didn't know that that was what was going to happen. Um, it's um, it's a weird kind of ethical razor's edge there. But um, that's generally the idea that we've had is that we can't use the ignorance as a defense um, for doing something or not doing something. Um, so that's the research I did. And why this is going to be, for me, um, a little bit different of a video than 
than normal. I would normally just kind of leave it there. I would just say like, here's what I learned about it. And um, this is why it was super interesting to me. Um, while going through this research, I came to the realization that I hold a lot of implicit biases that I never really realized before. And I want to say that for, um, I, I would argue that every single human being who has had past life experiences, so basically anyone who isn't a newborn, who has been able to experience things and use those experiences to affect their future or present actions or thinking have implicit biases. And it's not to say that implicit bias is um, cut and dry a bad thing. It's obvious that this is ingrained in us in some way, probably to enhance our survival as when we were, you know, um, from way back when, you know, and um, it shouldn't be, I'm not saying that as an excuse for having negative or um, having this bias affect us in a way that is really bad um, or that is making society the way it is right now and how it seems like it's making us stuck and not allowing us to move forward. Um, but it's obvious that this is ingrained in us um, probably from an evolutionary standpoint. And I'm sure that um, scientists have looked into that as to why. And I, I want to say when it comes to bias in general, um, there's they've come up with pretty good reasons for why we've had all sorts of different biases. So for me, this is where the Apple figure stuff out portion is going to come in. Um, from a mental health standpoint, uh, going through all of this research and trying to better understand what implicit bias is, I realized how much implicit bias I have in myself. Um, I, you know, if you haven't already figured out, I am a pretty liberal progressive person. Um, I am most certainly pro Black Lives Matter. Um, I will include a link down below of how you can contribute to that movement. Um, and I'm also pro LGBT plus I, you know, I stand for all human beings. Um, but that's how I feel consciously. That's how I feel. Um, as I say it uh, off the top of my head, but I realized looking back on past actions, on past feelings, past thoughts, that that doesn't make me who I am. And this implicit bias affects that. So some examples I can think of are, um, I grew up in Southern California and my um, grandfather, um, my mom, they all lived in some of the um, less desirable areas of Los Angeles. Um, primarily South Central and um, growing up in the 80s and 90s, um, there's a lot of movies that kind of pertain to things like gang violence um, or the prisons. Um, and not to say that those movies, that all of them put black people in a bad light, but a lot of them centered around them as characters and often they were the villains or the um, aggressors. And there was um, not a lot of movies that I remember watching where it was the other way around, where it was a corrupt white person who was making life difficult for a good black person. Um, and I remember as a child, um, early implicit bias, um, my dad had taken us into a part of town that was less desirable by accident. Um, you know, take a wrong turn, that whole thing. And we found ourselves in a neighborhood that was like, wow, this is kind of scary. And I found myself looking around and I was more scared of a black person walking down the street than I was of a white person walking down the exact same street. Um, and I realized that's an implicit bias that um, this fear, this irrational fear is based off of this implicit bias because of 
what society and what film and television had shown me up to that point. Um, and again, it goes the other way. I already explained that, you know, I love to joke that, hey, I'm really good at math, but that's because I'm half Japanese um, and making stupid jokes like that. But I know that I have been in group projects where I've been in a class and I will see a another Asian person in my class and immediately say, that's my competition. I would ignore the black kids in my class or I would ignore the white kids in my class because of that implicit bias. And it's a very racist bias. Like when I say it out loud and I'm recording it on film, like I am right now, it's, I feel a little dirty inside for knowing that I thought that before. Um, and it's, I think it's important for everyone to do that. Um, so yeah, um, what I want to get out of this video is I, I hope that this video has been informative, educational, uh, maybe a little bit entertaining um, for whoever it is that's still watching. Um, but I would want to challenge anyone watching this to do the same thing that I'm doing right now. Um, look, look into your past, look into what you've done in the past. Um, go back and think about your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions, um, that were brought on because of this implicit bias. Um, and I think this is a, a very good challenge that I think everyone should do, regardless of who you are, regardless of your skin color, regardless of your gender, regardless of your sexuality. I think this is a very good thing to do. Um, and um, yeah, because I think the, the sooner we do this and we realize that we have this implicit bias, that is dehumanizing other people and it ends up closing our minds off um, and it makes it very difficult to have these healthy conversations because it's uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable to have this kind of conversation with yourself, uh, let alone with somebody else. And I challenge everyone to confront your bias own up to your, bi your bias, hold yourself accountable. Um, if you ignore these things, if you bury your head in the sand, so to speak, when it comes to this and you just hold yourself to some high degree that you are better um, because, hey, I'm not racist like that person is racist. So therefore I'm better than them it doesn't help anyone. It's really not. And it's never going to help that other person realize what it is that they might be doing. Because when I see people on Twitter, Facebook, other social medias that are posting things like all lives matter or um, are posting um, blue lives matter, or I, I think we just immediately throw them under the proverbial bus and we just think really negative of them and we ultimately just need to have conversations um, we need to be open with one another we need to be aware of our own implicit bias that we have towards those that we disagree with um, i know i'm extremely guilty of that i've looked i i i i have my coworkers, well, most of my coworkers are conservative and I have to constantly remind myself, don't just immediately say that this person is an uneducated, racist, white supremacist, blah, blah, blah. Um, cause that's, that's again, that's an implicit bias. You think, oh, this guy's right wing. Oh, this guy voted for a certain president. This guy must be a racist. This guy must be stupid. This guy, no. On the contrary, a lot of these people tend to be extremely educated, but they have some extremely deep embedded biases. And then I reflect on myself and I realize 
I have a lot of deep embedded biases. And if we don't confront these biases and we don't talk about these biases, then it's going to be almost impossible for either side to be able to communicate with one another constructively. We have to own up to the fact that none of us are going to be perfect. None of us are going to be um, holier than another. Um, we have to realize we're all human. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses. And the sooner we come to terms with that, the sooner we can have conversations that can open people's minds to understanding the world and their own their selves better um and that's where i kind of wanted to go with this and that's why this was going to be a special episode um so again i encourage everyone who is still watching this right now um, please challenge yourself challenge your friends challenge those you disagree with um to just have a conversation about your biases um because I think until we start doing that and we start having these conversations that um, it's only going to get worse, um, that we're only going to continue to become more divided. Um, so, yeah, um, I really hope you enjoy this video. I really hope that this has been, um, again, informative, educative um, and just entertaining um, to an extent. I know that this is not exactly the most entertaining topic, but I think it's. Um, um, I think it's important and uh yeah um i hope you uh all have a wonderful wonderful day and uh i hope uh this i hope this opens some eyes so uh once again thank you so much for joining me and i hope you have a great great day